Sound was one of the first physical phenomenon to be described as waves. And when I make a sound, the force of my clap pushes a wave of compressed air away from me and into the ears of the people around me who perceive it as sound. All sound is essentially a series of compression waves, each closely followed by a band of less compressed air or rarefied air. The individual air molecules aren't actually pushed very far, only far enough to bump into the molecules next to them. This model shows how the process works. Individual air molecules are set into motion by the sound wave and pushed into the molecules next to them. These, in turn, push on the molecules next to them while the first molecules move back to their original position. The details of this process were of great interest to physicists, and they spent considerable effort working out all the details of how these waves move through the atmosphere and how their movements affect what we hear. One of the ways they did this was projecting sections of lines on a rotating glass disk. The segments projected could be visualized as a line of individual air molecules being moved by sound waves coming from various directions. In the 19th century, acoustics was used to teach the science of sound, but it was also important as a way to teach the physics of waves, which were seen as being basic to the understanding of phenomena like light and electricity. Unfortunately, sound waves are longitudinal waves, whereas light and electric waves are transverse. For most purposes, it was possible to assume that sound waves are transverse, and a number of demonstrations were developed to make that point. Models of transverse waves were particularly good at explaining the interaction of waves and offered a convincing explanation of beats and other forms of wave interactions. Although most acoustic phenomena can be explained with transverse waves, there were a few built-in problems. The main one was that transverse waves, such as light, can be polarized. Unfortunately, sound waves simply cannot. This was a minor problem and one that rarely came up in the classroom, but the fact that it was tolerated is an indication of how important the topic of waves was in the 19th century physics. In the 20th century, light and other kinds of waves were discovered to be far more complex than had been previously imagined. Wave models like the ones seen here survive today as relics of a simpler view of the natural world that has come to be called classical physics.